Ladies and gentlemen, our brothers and sisters, we walk together in footsteps millennia old. Here in Waitara, we stand on country upon which the Karingai and Darug people have performed age-old ceremonies of celebration, initiation and renewal. As we gather this evening, we acknowledge the Darug and Garingai people as the traditional custodians of this land on which the light of Christ Center stands. We pay respect to elders past and present, the keepers of the dreaming. Their spirituality acknowledges all of creation, reminding us that the land does not belong to us, rather we belong to the land. We acknowledge their living culture and their unique role in the life of this region. For the last 16 months, it has been my remarkable privilege to lead our Diocese of Broken Bay as we have waited for the appointment of our new bishop, our fourth bishop in our 33-year history. Just one month ago, we received the most welcome news of the announcement of Bishop Anthony Randazzo as our new shepherd for our journey into the future. Now, on this feast day of St. Charles Borromeo, the great 16th century uh, bishop of the ancient see of Milan, it is with immense joy that I welcome you this evening to the Light of Christ Center for the celebration of the Eucharist when the papal bull will be declared. Bishop Anthony will be seated for the first time on his cathedra the chair which symbolizes his authority as shepherd of our local church of Broken Bay. And when Bishop Anthony thus commences his ministry in our midst. I welcome the Church of Broken Bay from across our 26 parishes and our various migrant communities. From our 53 schools, diocesan and congregational, and from our vibrant Catholic care agencies, together with the clergy, and the seminarians of our diocese, the members of religious institutes who enrich our diocese with their presence and apostolates, and the many representatives of our ecclesial entities and associations. On behalf of our diocese, I welcome our many guests who have joined us for this historic occasion, especially His Excellency, the Apostolic Nuncio, Most Reverend Adolfo Yelana, Archbishop Anthony Fisher, Metropolitan Archbishop of Sydney, and Archbishop Mark Coleridge, President of the Australian Catholic Bishops' Conference. It is a special joy to have with us this evening our second and third bishops, a Bishop Emeritus David Walker, who retired in November 2013, and Archbishop Peter Commonsoli, now Archbishop of Melbourne, translated there in August 2018. Tonight, they are joined by many Catholic bishops from around Australia, and we express our gratitude to them for being here with us tonight. I welcome our brothers and sisters from other Christian communities and acknowledge especially the presence of Bishop Peter Stewart, the Anglican Bishop of Newcastle as well as the representatives of various religious traditions who have joined us this evening. We are honoured to have with us civic leaders representing levels of government, local, state and federal. We are joined by many friends from the Archdiocese of Sydney, from which Bishop Randazzo has come to us, and by friends from the Archdiocese of Brisbane, which has formed Bishop Anthony in his life of faith and priestly ministry. We are conscious that circumstances prevent a number of Bishop Anthony's immediate family uh, being here with us this evening. And we are especially mindful of Colin and Katerina, Bishop Anthony's mother and father uh, in Brisbane, who are with us in heart and prayer, along with Bishop Anthony's sister, Angela. However, it is a great joy uh, to have with us two other sisters of Bishop Anthony who have traveled uh, from Queensland to be with us 
uh, Susanna and Christina, you are most welcome. This evening, we welcome our new bishop, in whom we are gathered as the community of Catholic faith in this beautiful territory of Broken Bay, the only diocese in the world to be named after a body of water. Over the bay stands the great lighthouse of Baron Joey. As it sheds light for the seafarer, we pray that standing with our new bishop, we the Church of Broken Bay, may be light for our world, dispelling the shadows of twilight, of twilight however they are cast. It is therefore fitting that we have gathered in this place named the Light of Christ Center. Earlier this evening, the priests of our diocese and visitors gathered with Bishop Anthony in the Cathedral Church of our diocese, Our Lady of the Rosary, to pray the church's evening prayer. Bishop Anthony was welcomed at the door of his new cathedral by Father Peter de Souza, administrator of the Cathedral Parish of Hornsby. Led by the light of Christ symbolized by the great Easter candle, Bishop Anthony entered the cathedral to pray with his fellow bishops and the clergy of our diocese. Before making his profession of faith and oath of fidelity, to the Apostolic Nuncio, thereby expressing his communion with the See of Rome. We concluded our prayer singing the Salve Regina in honor of Mary, star of the sea, our patronal saint, the one who keeps us safe and united with her son. It is fitting that as our celebration this evening begins, we then share this earlier moment of welcome and prayer with you all. And so may this welcome of Bishop Anthony to his new cathedral earlier this evening extend now to that welcome of warmth and anticipation all of us joyfully offer Bishop Anthony as our new shepherd and pastor.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it is a great joy to be here with you tonight as the Most Reverend Anthony Randazzo is installed as Bishop of Broken Bay. I thank the erstwhile administrator of the diocese and the consultants for their welcome. Father Anson has already welcomed civic and ecclesiastical dignitaries and groups represented here tonight, relatives and friends of the new bishop. I thank them all for their presence. I acknowledge His Excellency, the Apostolic Nuncio to Australia, representing His Holiness, Pope Francis. Archbishop Mark Coleridge, President of the Australian Catholic Bishops' Conference, along with most of the bishops of Australia, including two of the three previous bishops of Broken Bay. I greet the priests, deacons, religious and lay faithful of the Church of Broken Bay. This is a night of great rejoicing for you and for all the diocese. I welcome visiting priests and people from outside the diocese and a warm hello to the Bishop's very proud parents, Colin and Katerina, who we hope are watching the live stream. Today is the feast of St. Charles Borromeo, who is described in Butler's Lives as the most accomplished Italian Bishop of his time. Famed for his passion for Christ, his sheer hard work, his preaching and teaching, his service of the poor and marginalised, and his determined efforts to reform his diocese. These efforts won him the admiration of God's people and of history, but led the Dominican nuns to trash his name, the cathedral canons to have troops open fire on him, and the Brothers of Humility to dispatch a friar to assassinate him at Vespers. I'm pleased to see that our new bishop survived his first Vespers earlier tonight. <laughs> to paraphrase Oscar Wilde, to lose one auxiliary bishop to Broken Bay might be regarded as a misfortune. But for me to have now lost two of my auxiliaries to Broken Bay looks more like carelessness. <laughs> bishop Anthony has earned the respect and affection of the pastors and people of the Archdiocese of Sydney, especially those in the Western region for which he has been responsible. As Episcopal Vicar for Formation, he's contributed much to the discernment of vocations and formation of future and already priests. As Chair of Sid the Sydney Catholic Schools Board, he's contributed to the mission and governance of Catholic education. He also brings to Broken Bay many gifts and experiences as a parish priest, canonist, seminary rector, curial official, and bishop. He will now be charged with leading, sanctifying, and teaching more than 200,000 Catholics stretching across Sydney's North Shore to the Central Coast as Chief Shepherd. These times call for bishops of faith and compassion, of courage and mercy, like St. Charles Borromeo. Pope Francis has expressed his confidence that Bishop Anthony is the man for the job. And so, before we install him, I must ask His Excellency, Archbishop Adolfo Tito Ilana, do we have a mandate from the Holy See? Let it be read. I'll, read, I'll re, uh, have the text in Latin in a summarized form and the whole translation in English. Franciscus Episcopus Servus Servorum Dei, Venerabili Fratri Antonio Randazzo, Actinos Episcopo Titulo Quiziensi, 
et auxiliariats geotesi sidniensis, sacrorum as antistitis sinos tortuosi nominato, salutem et apostolicam benedictionem. Quem pastoralis conversationes cardinem paterna de lectione, ad spirituales necessitates flectentes, ecclesiales comunitates sinus tortuosi, vacantis in presens, post translationem, postremi sacrorum antisiti sui, venerabilis fratris Petri Andrei Comensoli, ad metropolitanem ecclesiam melburnensem, novum eidem expectatum pastorem, ac vite diocesane moderatorem preficere properamus. De te ergo, venerabilis frater, cugitavimus qui in apostolico tuo lavore auxiliaris in ac diocesi siniensi, exercendo cumulatis meritis, probatis moribus preditus, et missiones amoris ufultus videris, ut actum sensiamos ad hoc novo munus explendum. Proinde, audito consilio congregationes proepiscopis, apostolice nostre autoritatis plenitudine, te, superiores titulares ecclesiae vinculo atque auxiliares mundere resolutis, episcopum sinos tortuosi constituimus, debitis datis iuribus congruisque impositis obligationibus. Datum Rome, apud Sanctum Petrum, die septimo mensis octobris, anno domini bis millesimo, onde vigesimo pontificatus nostri septimo, Franciscus. Francis, Bishop, Servant of the Servants of God, to the Venerable Brother Anthony Randazzo, until now titular Bishop of Quisa and Auxiliary Bishop of the Archdiocese of Sydney, appointed Bishop of Broken Bay, greetings and apostolic blessings. The truthful, loving, and reverent meditation on God can be called wisdom from whence the mysteries of salvation flow forth. Besides, recalling the fragrance of Christ himself is regarded as prudence. Hence, immersed in these thoughts, we ought all the more to order all things that make it possible to understand, approach, see the word of God, and reflect on him. Keeping in mind this fundamental principle of pastoral practice with paternal love, we turn to the spiritual needs of the ecclesial community of Broken Bay, which is now vacant after the transfer of the last bishop, the venerable brother Peter Andrew Comensoli, to the Metropolitan Church in Melbourne. And we hasten to place at the head of that ecclesial community, the awaited shepherd who will preside over the diocesan life. Therefore, we thought of you, venerable brother, who with the acquired experience in your apostolic work as auxiliary of the Archdiocese of Sydney, endowed with exemplary conduct and strengthened by the love for the mission you are considered by us to be suitable to take on this new office. Consequently, after receiving the advice of the Congregation for Bishops, by the fullness of our apostolic authority, releasing you from the bond with the aforementioned titular church and from the task of auxiliary, we appoint you as Bishop of Broken Bay, with due rights and appropriate obligations. We want you, that you inform the clergy and the people of that ecclesial community of this decree of ours. We urge them to welcome you as a father to be loved, as a teacher 
to be listened to, and as a guardian of souls to be honored. While entrusting you with this office, venerable brother, we pray to God that he may grant you to be a faithful minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ in that fundamental charity towards all, which is the soul of the gospel itself and of the sacraments. Given in Rome at St. Peter's on the seventh day of the month of October, the year of the Lord, 2019, seventh year of our pontificate, Francis.
pray. Preserve in the midst of your people, we ask, O Lord, the spirit with which you filled the bishop, St. Charles Borromeo, that your church may be constantly renewed, and by conforming herself to the likeness of Christ, may show his face in the world, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses, and in all the inhabited parts of the land, I will feed them with good pasture. And the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. The word of the Lord.
covenant made, a promise to David, my chosen one. Your children shall rule for all ages to come. Your throne is established forevermore. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. In the light of the grace I have received, I want to urge each one among you not to exaggerate his real importance. Each of you must judge himself soberly by the standards of the faith God has given him. Just as each of our bodies has several parts and each part has a separate function, so all of us, in union with Christ, form one body, and as parts of it, we belong to each other. Our gifts differ according to the grace given us. If your gift is prophecy, then use it as your faith suggests. If administration, then use it for administration. If teaching, then use it for teaching. Let the preachers deliver sermons, the almsgivers give freely, the officials be diligent, and those who do works of mercy, do them cheerfully. Do not let your love be a pretense, but sincerely prefer good to evil. Love each other as much as brothers should, and have a profound respect for each other. Work for the Lord with untiring effort, and with great earnestness of spirit. If you have hope, this will make you cheerful. Do not give up if trials come, and keep on praying. If any of the saints are in need, you must share with them, and you, sh you should make hospitality your special care. The word of the Lord.
reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd is the one who lays down his life for his sheep. The hired man, since he is not the shepherd and the sheep do not know him, abandons the sheep and runs away as soon as he sees a wolf coming. And then the wolf attacks and scatters the sheep. This is because he is only a hired man and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for my sheep, and there are other sheep I have that are not of this fold, and these I have to lead as well. They too will listen to my voice, and there will be only one flock and one shepherd. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus St. Charles Borromeo, whose feast we celebrate today, has been the subject of biographers and historians for over 400 years. The 16th century Archbishop of Milan and patron saint of bishops, seminarians and catechists is perhaps best remembered for being a bold reformer of the church. With his legacy of reform, some might forget that Charles's greatest legacy is his religious virtue and his inspiration for others to be disciples of the Lord. As a reformer, Charles identified many challenges in the events of everyday life that left unchecked were harmful or abusive to his people and to the mission of the church. Once he identified these challenges, he would preach the word of God into the various circumstances always with the purpose of bringing to the attention of all members of the community the right order of life. With God, our creator and redeemer, at the center. At the heart of Charles's preaching was a call to conversion, which would lead to renewal and laid the foundation for authentic reform. St. Charles remained firm in his conviction that through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, all of creation is restored. For Charles, this was not merely a static, dogmatic thesis, it was a living and dynamic profession of faith that would animate his life and ministry. The restored creation for Borromeo would be recognized most powerfully in a renewed church. Somewhat courageously, he focused his attention on the Reformation of the clergy. In this, St. Charles would provide for us 
the inspiration taken up by the fathers of the Second Vatican Council that the renewal of the church begins with the renewal of the clergy. One outward sign of this renewal was mandating that all clergy were to be clean-shaven. Charles appeared in public without a beard. Firstly, to show that conversion, renewal and reform also applied, perhaps especially applied, to himself. And secondly, to be in solidarity with his closest collaborators, the clergy. When the shepherd offers personal testimony to the saving power of God in his own life, then the sheep will follow with confidence and hope. When the shepherd lives a life of fidelity to God and is at the service of God's holy people, then the people of God will be drawn more deeply into their vocation to be holy. When the shepherd imitates Christ by giving his life for the sheep, the people will listen and will be of one mind and one heart in the spirit. With Christ, the good shepherd as our guide, there is the faithful promise of life to the full. In the letter to the Romans that we have listened to this evening, St. Paul writes with a certain boldness, reminding members of the Christian community not to exaggerate their own importance. While he affirms that each has received the grace of God, Paul cautions that the Christian vocation is not merely to work as individuals, each separately pursuing their own personal salvation. Rather, St. Paul reminds the community that fellowship with Christ means an abiding communion with his body. In the body of Christ, each member has a place, a dignity, a role, a gift, and a vocation for the benefit of all. As the fathers of the Second Vatican Council taught, the people whom Christ has established as his own are a communion of life, charity, and truth. As members of his body, we are called as the church to be an instrument for the redemption of all. Our common call is to be holy, to be disciples, and to be sent forth as the light of the world and the salt of the earth. Of course, to be holy is to be configured more closely to Christ each day. To be authentic disciples is to take up the cross and follow Jesus each day. And to be sent forth as missionaries into the world requires that we use our gifts freely, diligently, and cheerfully so that others may come to see and know Christ present in us, sometimes by what we say and do, but always because of who we are, the living body of Jesus Christ. In his prophetic way, St. Paul reminds us that it is through the power of the Holy Spirit that we are configured daily to Christ. It is the Holy Spirit who stirs up action in us. 
to the church at Corinth, he says, in the one spirit, we were all baptized, Jews as well as Greeks, slaves as well as citizens. To the church at Ephesus, he says, there is one body and one spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. My sisters and brothers, what is common to St. Paul and St. Charles Borromeo is their utter conviction that the love of God is given to us in Jesus Christ. They remind us that the Holy Spirit binds us together into one body, the church, me, your bishop, and you, God's holy people entrusted to my care. The lives and teachings of St. Paul and St. Charles Borromeo remind me and you that as disciples of Christ, we do not exist in isolation from the human society in which we live. St. Paul knew this when he wrote to the early Christian communities. He gave remarkable testimony to his vocation by preaching the gospel, which he saw as a duty which was laid upon him. He did not need to be asked or told to preach the good news. It was a commission that he undertook with commitment, passion, and above all, generosity. Likewise, St. Charles was adamant that reform was only possible in the church if it was preceded by a personal and genuine conversion and renewal. My dear people, the first question to ask today is whether the remarkable testimonies of these saints is something you and I should imitate in our church of Broken Bay. The answer comes from Paul, who was concerned not for himself, but for those who had not heard of Jesus. How could he win them for Christ? Paul is quick to remind us that whether we eat or drink or whatever we do, we do all to the glory of God. He says, be imitators of me, just as I also am of Christ. St. Paul's aim is clear. He does all for the sake of the gospel, that he may become a fellow partaker of it. His faith and love of Christ would be utterly inauthentic and false if he abandoned the pattern of life set by Jesus and if he no longer cared for other people. He tells us his aim in three ways, to win others, to save others, to partake in the benefits of the gospel himself. And when all is said and done, he reminds us not to seek self-glorification, but rather to boast about the Lord, not to exaggerate our real importance, but to give freely, to be diligent, and to be careful and cheerful. If we are in need of encouragement in order to carry out ministry among the sick and the poor, the stranger and the lost, the abused and the marginalized, we can take heart by standing alongside St. Paul, St. Charles Borromeo, and countless women and men who have dedicated their lives to the mission of the church in Broken Bay over the past 33 years, and indeed 
in the church across the world over the centuries. We need look no further than these holy men and women for the blueprint for our Christian life. My sisters and brothers, as we gather to celebrate the Mass this evening, we place ourselves before others to be for others. And we do so mo motivated by love of God and of neighbour. Side by side, as sisters and brothers, let us encourage, challenge and support each other as we respond to our vocation to be Christ in the world. In baptism, we have already been committed to a life of Christian discipleship. May God, who has begun the good work in us, bring it to completion. Amen. My sisters and brothers, let us come before our loving God, praying for the needs of the church and the whole world. Let us pray for the Holy Church of God throughout the world. Che Francesco, il nostro Papa, Antonio, il nostro Vescovo, e tutto il clero siano benedetti da Dio per essere fedeli al loro ministero. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who govern us. Ellos serán personas de integridad que defenderán el bien común de todos los ciudadanos. Loguemos al Señor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the people and the agencies of the Diocese of Broken Bay. Que tal moi aki e que tal tol kotoa i e tai o sisi o Broken Bay a ho tau ui na e fai i ho tau paptai so. Mo tau whakahai ki mamani a e mama a Christo. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the poor in our diocese and throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the sick and the suffering. Xin cho những bệnh nhân, những người đau khổ về thể xác lẫn tinh thần và những ai bị tổn thương bởi bạo lực hoặc lạm dụng tình dục được chữa lành và cảm nghiệm lòng Chúa thương xót. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
let us pray for vocations to the ordained ministry and consecrated life. 请让年轻人和心境年轻的人聆听天主的圣召,为主牧养他神圣的子民. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith. Na ang mga tumanggap ng buhay na walang hanggan sa binyag ay magpiging sa hapag ng Panginoon, kasama si Maria, at lahat ng mga banal, manalangin tayo sa Panginoon. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you know all our needs. Grant these petitions which we make in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Look, O oh Lord, upon the offering placed on your altar in commemoration of St. Charles, and grant by the power of this sacrifice that as you made him an attentive pastor, outstanding in the merit of his virtues, so you may make us abound in good fruit by our works. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Charles Borromeo, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so, with a company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these offerings, these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them. For the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude. Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, 
in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <laughs> the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, 
Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. <clears throat> Aid us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Stay calm. Congratulations, dear brother. Peace be with you. Great joy in your new ministry.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ, give me safe for eternal life.
say, take this bread, take this wine, now the simple made divine for any to receive. Oh, mercy, we come to your table. By your grace, you are made. upon me in my state and all the world will call me blessed for God works marvels in my sight and holy holy is God's name all that I am sings of the God who brings to mind to earth in me my spirit soul
the faithful ones remembering Israel with his mercy. The promise now to those before and, and to their children Let us pray. May the sacred mysteries of which we have partaken, O Lord, we pray give us that determination which made St. Charles faithful in ministry and fervent in charity. Through Christ our Lord. Your Excellency, Archbishop Iliana, Your Grace, Archbishop Fisher, and Brother Bishops, Priests, and Deacons, distinguished guests, my sisters and brothers in Christ. These few inadequate words cannot express the joy that I feel tonight as I begin my ministry as the fourth bishop of Broken Bay. I'm, hung, I'm humbled, thank you, Archbishop. <laughs> you can't hear what he's saying down there. <laughs> I'm humbled by the confidence and trust that our Holy Father Francis has shown in me and Your Excellency, on behalf of our local church of Broken Bay, I would ask that you graciously convey our gratitude to Pope Francis, reassuring him of our love and communion in Christ. Archbishop Fisher, as Metropolitan of the province of Sydney, I thank you for your fraternal care towards me. I'm confident that you and the people and the priests and deacons and bishops of Sydney and the Archdiocese have prepared me well for this new ministry, and I'm deeply grateful. To Archbishop Coleridge, President of the Australian Catholic Bishop Conference, he also used to be my bishop, and to my brother bishops who have travelled from various parts of Australia, I thank you for your presence. You honour me, and most importantly, you honour my people, and I thank you. Likewise to our civic leaders and our religious friends present this evening, I look forward to our ongoing work as together we strive to make our corner of New South Wales, and a very beautiful corner it is, I might add, an even greater place for families and communities to live work, and recreate. Since my appointment to Broken Bay on the 7th of October, I've been overwhelmed by the enthusiastic reception that I have received. On the very next day, the 8th, I went into the Chancery and Father David said, oh, we're having a little morning tea, and I thought five, ten people. Two hundred people later, <laughs> we concluded the morning tea just a tiny example of the enthusiasm and the graciousness with which I have been received. I've had the opportunity to meet and pray with priests and the deacons, officials of the chancery, Catholic schools office and school principals, 
members of the staff of Catholic Care, as well as some members of the Cathedral Parish. Your personal warmth and your zeal for the mission of the church lift my heart in praise of God. I'm deeply grateful and I eagerly await and look forward to accompanying you on our pilgrimage of faith. We're blessed this evening to have my two immediate predecessors with us, Bishop Walker and Archbishop Commonsoli, also known as BB2 and BB3. <laughs> no hints on who might have suggested that. <laughs> my brothers, it is really great to have you with us. You are both held in such high esteem and greatly loved by these your people of Broken Bay. And I hope that I can be half the bishop that you have been leading this flock. Very few of you would know that Archbishop Commonsoli and I studied together in Rome. I had to study canon law. He had moral theology. I'll let you work out which was the worst. <laughs> he then went to Sydney as an auxiliary, and so did I. He then came to Broken Bay, and then so did I. <laughs> and you might think that I'm following him, but in fact, when the Apostolic Nuncio read the words from the Holy Father today, you'll notice that his name is even written on my papal bull. <laughs> so I wonder who is following who. <laughs> I'm very grateful because he has, is a wonderful bishop and a very dear friend to me. To all those who have worked behind the scenes to prepare for this day, I realise that four weeks is not a very long amount of time to prepare. I remind you that Archbishop Commonsoli only had three. <laughs> and yet, I think that you have absolutely done just the most amazing job. You've outdone yourselves. <laughs> From welcome and hospitality to music and worship and prayer. You've done yourselves and our diocese proud, and I thank you. A final word of thanks to Father David Ranson, who is sitting just over here in the front row with the consultants. Father David has, for the last 16 months, held firmly to the rudder, guiding this church with compassion, integrity, and love. Father David, I am deeply grateful for all that you have done for this church of Broken Bay. And I now make my own the words of the Master in chapter 25 of Matthew's Gospel, as I say, well done, good and faithful servant. <laughs> My sisters and brothers, as we continue our journey of faith together, Please pray for me that I might be a good shepherd after the heart of Christ. Thank you. One last word, and that is that immediately following Mass this evening, there is a supper being served in the hall behind where we are. So you're all very, very welcome to join us there.
was the MC. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God.